Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're back on the second dev server for Update's new power, and I thought we'd have a look at the Lorraine 37L. The reason is, is well, I missed it on the first dev server, and to be honest, I feel like it needs a little bit of love. It is a new vehicle coming to rank 1 of the French tech tree, ambassador rating at 1.3, and you can find it right here after the AMR 35ZT3, and just before the Sal 40. So, hopefully it's better than at both of the machines because they are at least a little bit weak in the game. The main factor of the Lorraine 37L is the 47mm SA37 cannon that it has mounted right here. This vehicle has access to a pretty powerful gun for the tier and also it does have a pretty nice reload on it which is manually loaded so it is affected by crew skills so you can get this thing down to three seconds if you want to with a base of 3.9 seconds. It also has a four-man crew, one driver in the front, then you've got three guys in the back, including a commander, then the gunner, and also the loader. The shells are all positioned right here at the bottom, so that leaves it to be ammo rack quite easily. And then the engine block is just in the front. It only has 70 horsepower for this machine. But this machine is only a 7.2 tonner on a tractor chassis, so shouldn't be too much of an issue. The main problem with this vehicle is the lack of armor. This thing has 9mm on the front, the upper glacis is 6mm, 4mm on the top here, so good luck against planes, and also the gun shield itself sits at 7mm. The most armored thing on this vehicle is the tracks and the gun, which is never a good situation for really anything. At least the breech itself is 150mm thick, so you're probably not going to get gun breached, but most of the time you're just going to get gunned down in other areas. The side armor is 6mm, so literally you can get machine gunned to death, and the back is 6'2". And with the fact that three of the crew members are uh, out in the open, uh, or in the elements, yeah, it basically means that uh, if anybody gets on your side or your back, you're just going to die because they're just going to get machine gunned to death. So this is a front-facing vehicle towards the enemy. This machine also has access to some pretty good gun depression, 13 degrees, uh, which is not too bad. And the gun elevation of 16 degrees isn't the best, but it's good enough. The turret rotation is 10.2 degrees per second. The only real issue with that is the firing arc is not very high on this machine. It can pretty much go over this way and also over this area here. So that's a bit of a problem. I'll show you the max, uh, the max stuff when we get into the test drive area. When it comes to the modifications, this vehicle only gets one shell, so at least you get the best shell when it starts, and that is the MLE 1936. This is an APC shell, it pens 94, 76, 32 respectively, and should be able to go through the majority of stuff that you fight at 1.3 uh, with this machine. Um, the majority of the low tiers are very much dominated by auto cannon machines and fast firing vehicles with 37 stuff like stewards so yeah now you should be able to go through them no issue with this gun and then even a few things which are slightly higher br um, with the gun because it's also a 47 millimeter has a decent amount of ap in it so post pen damage should be quite nice the major modifications for me on this thing are going to be the mobility stuff um, the protection stuff is kind of useless um, because of the open top nature of it and also uh, the firepower stuff is well it's going to be a little bit useful but not as much as the mobility because the mobility is going to make you get into position quickly so you can fight off the hordes which is something you're going to have to do in this take up a defensive position and uh, be able to try and hold from there. You get the standard French camouflages, such as the bicolors and the tricolors, which is absolutely lovely. Then also the unicolor winter stuff and the winter spotted. So you can get really whatever you want when it comes to the condition and also scale of the vehicle. Uh, generally, the camos look quite nice for the French. Unfortunately, it doesn't get access to some of the later stuff, but that does make at least a little bit of sense. Overall, ammunition count is 22, which is easily enough to be able to carry a game if you decide to in the Lorraine 37L. Uh, so here's the little thing as it goes. You can see the little French boys on the back with their wonderful hats. This guy looking incredibly disgruntled, and same with his few partners here. 
You can see even on their lapels, they have 507 on them, which is pretty cool. Uh, so really well made uh, HD, you know, uh, little guys there. And you can even see when it comes to the movement of the horizontal, this is how far it goes. So it's about you know, 45 degrees across, maybe a little bit more for uh, the vehicle itself. Just goes slightly over the front road wheel. And uh, of course, Mr. Stretch Armstrong here is having a great time. But you can see it has uh, the full animations for when you move the uh, turret around. And then even on the elevation, it has the same thing with both of these guys, this guy's arms. So that's just a really nice little look. You know, they're, they're slightly off center, but that's because they're hitting, you know, the things attached to the wheels themselves instead of the wheels. So I think it looks kind of nice. The main thing about this vehicle is one thing you have to understand this isn't going to be like a big old carry there will be some times where you are able to carry with this thing but it's not going to be that often and the general reason for this uh, when it comes to the vehicle is the gun is quite uh, well it's not very well stabilized uh, it's generally very janky so you're going to try and get to a position with it and then hold that position as best that you can with this gun and with the high fire rate of the gun you will be able to let's say a bunch of panzer twos come around you know you can just keep tapping away keep bapping them with the decent velocity on the gun as well and be able to take stuff out and uh, have a bit of fun with it and the french rank one is generally seen as the worst rank one in game for ground and the reason for that is because of their very small uh very low firing guns which have been improved over you know a little bit of the period you can see there straight through a panzer 4 which is kind of nice and i think this is another one of those vehicles which has been added to the french rank one just to bolster it a little bit and this goes along with stuff like the amd that they added a little bit ago just as an extra little vehicle just to make the uh, just to make the grinding a little bit easier for the French. Um, and for me, I think it does its job, you know. It's another one of those interesting vehicles, not as interesting as something like the Zis vehicle for the, uh, for the Soviets, because obviously that has a much larger cannon on it, meaning that you can up tier it when you want. This vehicle is going to stick at its BR and pretty much only be usable at its BR because of its gun unless you want to try and move around the map and not be seen by people and hope that they don't have a machine gun, uh, then I suppose you could use this thing. But generally, that's not something that's going to happen. For me, I'm, going, I'm looking forward to this vehicle because it's a low-tier vehicle that will be one which I grind out first uh, because of its fact that it's low-tier and also because it's just nice playing something that is French again. I've pretty much researched the whole of the French tech tree, and look at that, it can even move the Panther. Look at that power from that engine, you know. Sometimes you've, sometimes you've got to be <laughs> marveled <laughs> by some French engineering. But the, <laughs> but the, main, the main thing is, you know, uh, from my point of view, I've spaded everything in the French tech tree apart from basically the Roland, the Leclerc, and the AMX-40. So whenever they add these smaller vehicles to the lower tiers, I always look forward to them. Because they're vehicles which I know it means I can go back to and play some of the little areas which I enjoy. And also, you know, be efficient at uh, spading something. Generally, I don't like playing vehicles that are spaded because... Um, there are so many vehicles that aren't, so why not try and play some new experiences and interesting things? And this is another vehicle that adds another uh, one of those experiences. It means that you can run around and have a bit of fun in. The Chiha LG was added last update. Um, I have no idea how that hit the engine. Uh, the Chiha LG was added last update uh, when it comes to... Uh, these little like donkey gun machines and uh, this Lorraine really follows the same pattern something which has decent penetration on the gun it has pretty good post pen damage as well if you hit uh, if you hit vehicles in the correct place and you can do uh, a decent amount with it with a good reload the only thing you got to watch out for is of course planes which will destroy you after the uh, 10 minute mark and also anything with a little bit more armor or, as I said, a heavy machine gun. This thing against an M2A2 is not going to be very fun, 
But this thing against a machine which may have a little bit longer of a fire rate, such as, you know, the 150 millimeter or maybe something like that, would be a pretty nice little vehicle to have. And since it's a 1.3, if you're not interested in it, then you can just research past it very easily and also get it modified very easily so you can focus on some of the larger vehicles in the game. I'll always be interested in Second World War vehicles. I'll always be interested in their stories and why they were created. And this one is no different. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank John Ryman, Universe, Conte Baraka, Elove Goat, Trigger Hippie, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez B. Young, and also Hans Fagellen, Sebastian Mizon, and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.